Welcome to Spearfishing Down Under. Today, we are jumping on a plane and we are headed to New York. Is that Times Square there? Mm. Yeah. Jalapeno, going spearfishing in New York. <laughs> on our way from Times Square. Times Square to the water. Audrey, are you going to shoot some fish tomorrow? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Tim's going to shoot some fish. I can't believe I'm on my way to spearfish. <laughs> and we're looking at Times Square. <laughs> that is unbelievable. Unbelievable. I was in US for work and I decided I'd fly to New York and jump in with my mate Hal. Hal had been in Australia diving with me for many years before, so we decided we'd return the trip and I'd go diving with him. With us was Hal's girlfriend at the time, Audrey, and one of the days his father also took us and boated for us. If you're a regular on the channel, you might remember my mate Hal, who actually diving with me over here shot the world record Red Emperor. The very first day, we launched the boat and headed out to an absolutely beautiful, flat, calm sea. For me, I was a bit worried because the water temperature was around 13, 14 degrees, way colder than I'm used to diving. And number one target fish for the next three days of diving was the striped bass. When we started diving, we were just looking for big schools of striped bass. It was quite incredible to see the different types of country that we're diving on. There was big mussel beds. There was patches of reef with long kelp that was very different to any kelp I've ever dove in. One of the spots we're diving, I noticed a big lobster trap. Hal explained to me the lobsters over there are the ones that have got the big claws. After spending most of the morning diving reef and not finding any striped bass, we made a move and dove a windmill, which to me was just mind blowing. It's just unbelievable. It's just like a big knife coming down to cut you in half. Far out. It was quite incredible how fishy this windmill was. Big porgies, which are like Australian brim. There was even some striped bass, and the very first time I got to see a striped bass was on this windmill. About the fifth dive, I saw a bigger one that I was tempted to shoot, but it wasn't quite the 20 kilo fish that Hal had promised me. On one of the last dives we did, I was swimming my way back up one of the pylons and ran into an incredible school of these porgies, of these brim. It was amazing to see just how thick these fish are and how incredible and epic the fishery is in New York. We made a move back to some of the reef because we hadn't seen any of the big striped bass. When we moved back to the reef, we noticed that the current was running really strong. It's quite incredible. It was very similar to some of the diving we do here in Australia, other than the fact the water's 13, 14 degrees. I did dive off the back of the reef and I drifted over some sand patch and on that sand patch was some fish I hadn't really seen, the black sea bass. Hal explained to me that they are actually a really tasty fish. Next dive I did again off the back of the reef on this sand patch, I was drifting along the bottom and I spotted the very first really good striped bass. Next dive, come back up onto another patch of reef and I didn't just see one striped bass, I actually saw my very first school. These fish weren't quite as big as I wanted so I just let them swim by and hoping there would be a bigger fish but there wasn't. We 
jumped back in the boat and we headed back up for another drift. Next drift, I did a dive and as I come down, I heard the thud of what was big fish tails. As soon as I hit the bottom, striped bass in a mega school swimming around me. Now, let me just explain. These striped bass to me are a mixture of a jobfish, a mulloway, and a barramundi. Their behavior reminds me of a mixture of those fish. Fish like this are in that 15 to 20 kilo range. I aimed up and I stoned my very first striped bass. Should have been one. Big ass school. Oh, that's a good fish. Yeah. Good that the same. I think mine's a bit fatter. I shot mine because he was fat. Like the whole school was there, and then a fat one swam in. Yeah. Mate, when I come down, I landed on too, so man. many of them. And you could just hear them from way before. I'm just like, where's Hal? Tell Hal to dive. And I'm trying to yell. Just like. These are decent fish. These are probably like mid 30s. Mine's a fatty, eh? Yeah, yours is a fat one. It's probably mid 30s. Yours got a big head. Yeah, mine's longer. Yours will be heavier because he's fatter. Although. Oi. These are babies, but. After we shot our first striped bass, we realized that the bag limit is only one each. So we thought we'd just dive in the school again and get a bit of footage before heading home for the day. Laying on the bottom, just incredible watching 15 to 20 kilo fish in their hundreds swimming around you. For me, it just blows my mind how incredible the fishery can be in one of the biggest cities in the world of New York. back into the harbour, it was late in the afternoon and the sunset was just gorgeous. New York's quite a beautiful place for a massive city. Happy I took the day off. Yeah. Thanks Audrey for driving the boat today. Always. Always. <laughs> How good is that sunset? That's wicked. New York dive. Next morning I got up excited, I'd seen big striped bass, pretty focused on getting another one. We jumped in the car early and we headed off for another day's chasing striped bass. first stop we pulled up at was actually a lighthouse. Incredible looking lighthouse, something that we don't have here in Australia like this. First dive we land on the bottom and there was just a plethora of small striped bass. Every dive, come down, lay on the bottom, striped bass just flying by, flying by. Water's a bit dirty, 
Little bit of current, but so many striped bass. How many stripers here? How many stripers are here? Oh, coming off the chain! They're everywhere. Do you, do you see any bigger ones? I saw like maybe three or four fish, like good fish. Hey? Like 20 kilo, 20 pounds. Like 10 kilo fish. Like if this was the only place we dove, you would have shot them and been going, like, yeah. That's actually clean there. Dive after dive again, seeing them. Quite incredible, not big fish, only around that five to 10 kilo range. So many bass there. Oh, it's just under me, there's just little bass everywhere. Massive schools of them. After spending a bit of time looking for striped bass there and only finding small ones, in an absolute glass out again, we jumped in the boat and we headed off to another area to see if we could find some more striped bass. Again, we went to the areas similar to where we'd found the striped bass yesterday looking for those fish. Current was again running quite strong and we begin to do drifts looking for them. We're finding other fish. One of the dives I dove down was following Hal, and he lined up and shot one of those black sea bass. These fish remind me of a black wrasse mixed with a cod. Quite a beautiful looking fish, beautiful meat, and tasted incredible. Striper come up behind us. Turn around on that. Just as you turn around on that, a striper come up behind us. Just one little guy. Yep. We went on the right country though anyway. Yeah, we're still with you. After a few drifts, diving together, I was following Hal, he was following me. We finally spotted our very first school of striped bass. Again, not the fish we wanted, so we let them swim by. I decided I wanted to try and get on film Hal shooting at striped bass. He dove in front of me, I followed him to the bottom, and we landed on a mega school of really good fish. Al took his time wading through the school. There's a couple of nice fish come in. There's some fish there that look to me to be well over 20 kilos. Finally, he picked a really nice one. Now, I was trying to film. I didn't do such a great job because I noticed that striped bass tangling up on the bottom. I chased it with him, we untangled it. Nothing like getting wrapped up when the current's running really strong. Okay. It's a bad on the bottom. I'm like, oh, it's gonna be a prick. I'm trying to get that off. Too. I thought there was a bigger one that come past earlier. Yeah. You good one? <laughs> How got it to the surface? We got a bit of footage, and then it was my turn to go and find a striped bass. How filming me this time? Our goal was to get a striped bass in that 50 pound range, which is 22 to 23 kilos. So I was trying to just take my time and pick the best fish I could see. How was on my shoulder filming me, 
fish swimming all around me. Quite incredible to see. Again, blown away with the thought that we are next to one of the biggest cities in the world. I waited, picked my fish, aimed up, shot one that I thought that was really big. I got him with a really good shot on the bottom. I just brought him in, grabbed a hold of him. Great fish, but not quite the fish that I wanted. That looked like a bigger school. Like bigger fish in that school. With our two fish, we decided we'd head home. And that night we had poke bowls of striped bass, really beautiful to eat, lovely fish. The next morning we woke up to the thickest fog I have ever seen. Our run out was a run out with a radar just to see where we were going. Heading out, foggy. New York diving. Yeah, stoked, it's right bass, it's right bass now. The pressure was really on because we'd been there, this is the third day, and the next day, the forecast was for cyclonic weather, rain, wind, and there was no diving to be done, so I wanted to get my 50 pound bass. First stop was the same lighthouse we dove the day before. Glass out, foggy. and were greeted by similar conditions in the water, but an unbelievable amount of small bass. Dive after dive, bass. Saw some bigger ones, maybe 10, possibly 15 kilos, but not those big bass that we wanted. Heaps of stripers there. Fish, bigger fish too, like maybe 20 pound. Yeah. Again, being flat, we made another move and headed out to, again, similar area to the day before. Again, we decided we we're gonna take turns filming each other. I dove first with Hal, laying on the bottom there in that strong current. It's quite incredible to see how strong that current could be there in New York. Next dive, I decided I wanted to shoot one of those black sea bass. They tasted so good from the days before, I thought I would get one as well. How low is that plane? Look at that plane. Next dive, I thought I would also target another fish I hadn't shot while I'm there was the blackfish. These are another really cool fish. Sort of remind me of a black drummer here from Australia. A little bit easier to target. Again, really nice white fillets and I noticed many of those reef fish over there are very similar. I end up, I shot myself my very first blackfish. <laughs> Next dive I dove again and I come down on the bottom and a big school of porgies, brim, swam in on me. Now, back in Australia, if I see these fish that are 
not flighty, but just coming to look at me, makes me think in places like where there's Barra or in places where there's Mulloway, it makes me think that there's no big fish in those areas. I mentioned it to Hal and said, hey, how about we make a move? As we made a move, the very next spot, as we sounded over it, looked like there was a lot of fish on the sounder. So I said, let me just jump in and film you, Hal, and see if you can find yourself a big striped bass. Very first dive, Hal landed on a mega school of striped bass. I was filming him. He couldn't quite find the fish that he wanted. We headed up for another drift. Next drift, it was my turn. Again, the pressure on, it was getting late in the afternoon. We've been diving all day. At this stage, I was quite cold and I was pretty focused on getting myself that 50 pound bass. We jumped in, started our drift, headed back to where the fish were and we dove together. Hal was filming me and I hit the bottom, surrounded by striped bass. I was so tempted, fish coming, a fat one, a long one, just trying to pick the exact fish. So I laid it on the bottom, my head was thinking, don't just shoot anyone, shoot the big one. I noticed one come that was really long, really fat. I took my aim, hit that fish a little bit high, and I tried to get it in my arms while I was on the bottom. That fish just flogged me as it went nuts, and I grabbed my arms around, it kicked me in the face, nearly knocked my mask off. I grabbed my arms on it and I knew this was my fish. Absolutely stoked. The fish I'd come looking for and right at the end of the third day we got it. It's a nice fish. Mission accomplished. <laughs> That was a big school. Yeah. That, that was a nice school. Yeah, you better? Yeah. It's probably 40 pounder. It's a good fish. Thanks, <laughs> man. That was fun. I'm like, I'm on a stone, I'm on a stone. <laughs> We headed back into the harbour to an absolute glass out. The sunset was beautiful, quite incredible to see just how amazing New York is in the water and outside. Absolutely beautiful place. It's going to absolutely howl tomorrow. It's strange even to think it. I actually wish Wendy was here now. She would have got seasick doing that though. What? That would have made her sick. Just that rolling, the way the boat rolls. Yeah. Just the way the boat rolls. Yeah. I can understand why Adriani gets sick with this boat. It just rolls so perfectly. It was an awesome three days diving with one of my closest mates, Hal. Even though he lives overseas in America, we talk probably every week, every second week about spearfishing and sort of guy that I just love being around and love diving with. For me, America was tough diving. It was cold, there was strong current, water was a bit dirty, but the fishery was amazing. And I hope in the future to get back to America, dive New York again, that'd be incredible, but also dive some of those other places maybe even on the East Coast, that just seemed to me to be so incredible. Hopefully one day, 
we get over there and we do that. Next episode, I'm back here in Oz, diving locally with my good mate, Josh Ball. We see some incredible fish, shoot some great fish, and we actually dive with a whole pot of pilot whales. My very first time doing that and some incredible footage from it. As always, thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing, thank you for your great comments, thank you for the amazing feedback. Listen, over the last couple of months, we've had incredible feedback. Thank you so much for that. We really love the community that's been built right here through Spearfishing Down Under, and I know so many people are being just inspired. I know a lot of people have learned a lot from, especially our Sharks series. Thank you so much for the feedback around that. Big shout out and a thank you to all of our sponsors that have been so helpful in all that we do. Thank you very much to Rife, as always, for the incredible gear. Thank you, Dive R, for the incredible fins that I got recently and the brand new fish bags that we've got for the jet ski. Don't forget, when you head into Adreno, use your discount code, Tim Spear, to get yourself 10% off all of your Rife gear. Final shout out to Venture, a brand new store opening up here in Brisbane where you can also get your Rife gear.